Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 18th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust that you are feeling blessed this morning and that you are hungry for the Word of God. With that being said, our text this morning is going to be found in Matthew chapter 7 and verse, we'll begin at verse 15. Matthew chapter 7 and let's begin at verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So what is the context of this passage? False prophets. Keep that in mind. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns? Or do they gather figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Now the context is false prophets. And we're talking about good and bad fruit. So the question is, what is fruit? Now, you may be thinking of works. Hold that thought. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Now, friends, when I've read these passages in the past, I've got to tell you, I've always referred to good fruit being my outward actions, the things that I do, the good that I do unto others. But that's not what this is talking about. How do we know that? All you have to do is turn to Luke, and let's look at chapter 6 and verse 45. Now, before we read this, remember the context is false prophets. And so what do false prophets do? They proselytize false doctrine. They teach false doctrine. Is that done by our outward works? Of course not. Well, look at Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. Out of his heart he brings forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. So you could say here, good works come from a good place in my heart, motivated by good in my heart. Therefore, it's talking about works. But you have to read the last sentence. Look at what it says. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth what? Speaketh. So everything that we've read is concerning with what comes out of the mouth. Now let's go back and look at Matthew chapter 7, and let's pick up at verse 15 again. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You will know them by the words that come out of their mouth. That's what fruit is. We just, we just discovered that. So you'll know them by the words that come out of their mouth. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good words out of his mouth. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil words out of his mouth. A good tree cannot bring forth evil words. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good words. Every tree that does not bring forth good words is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their words... You will know them. Now let's flip back over to Luke chapter 6 and look at verse 45, understanding this. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, good words. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth that which is evil, evil words. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Now, with this in mind, you should be thinking of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29 when it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, 
but only that which is good to the use of edifying. If it doesn't build somebody else up, you shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say it. And do this so that it will minister grace unto those that are listening. Now, at this point, it should be obvious to us the importance of this text because what God is telling us is no matter what you pretend, we're going to know who you really are if you're truly a follower of the Lord Jesus by what comes out of your mouth. Why? Because out of the mouth comes lies, comes gossip, comes slander, comes destructive words when we're angry. We sow chaos and discord by the words that come out of our mouth. We can absolutely destroy someone's character and reputation by things that we tell others, especially things that are false. But even if they're not false, we shouldn't be telling others about it. We curse God and men out of our mouth. We ridicule others out of our mouth. We tell filthy jokes and we say unclean things out of our mouth. And so if we want to examine our hearts, all we have to do is look at the things that come out of our mouth because it reveals what lies within the heart. That's what Jesus is saying. And so no matter how much we think things are clean within, all we have to do is listen to ourselves and we'll find out how much darkness is hidden away in dark and secret places in our hearts. And what's interesting about this is what James chapter 3 says. Now remember, James was Jesus' brother. So he plays a very significant role in his letter to the early Christians. And he says in chapter 3 verse 6, The tongue is a fire. It is a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body. And it sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and bird and serpent and things in the sea, they are all tamed and can be tamed by men. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Now, listen here for the references of what we just read in Matthew and Luke. You see, we bless God with the tongue, but we also curse men with the tongue. And these men that we are cursing are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brothers, my sisters, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter water? Can the fig tree, my brothers, bear olive berries, or a vine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show with good fruit, out of a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. And look what he says in verse 17. The wisdom that I'm talking about, says James, comes from above, and it's pure, it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's easy to be entreated, it's full of mercy and good fruits or good words without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, these are truly conditions of the heart, but the mouth exposes what's in the heart. So if we don't see these things evident in our lives, we should go before the Father and ask that the fruit of His Spirit, the words of His Spirit, would be implemented in our lives. And even though we are told that the tongue is like an angry beast and no man can tame him, we should surely set forth each day with one simple prayer. Lord, place a guard upon my mouth. Let me speak only that that blesses others and that ministers grace to their listening ear. Amen? Amen, friends. Well, I love you, and I'm so grateful that you spent a few moments with us again this morning, and I pray that these words of challenge and of blessing would minister grace unto your heart and that your walk with Jesus 
would be more fruitful today than it was yesterday. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.